So on top of everything else, um, today is Kalia's birthday. Kalia turns 18 today, and um, I'm home alone. Yep, and my girls are having breakfast together. So while I was out in the backyard, um, Kyra swooped up here quietly and pulled up in front of my house and got Kalia. And um, that's my life. I haven't seen my daughter since October 7th. It's my life, and that's what I talk about, like, that I'm always alone because they all still interact together, my whole family. They all go do stuff together, and then I'm here by myself. And I should be with them having breakfast this morning. But I'm not. Because Kyra married the exact replica of her father. And um, just a more educated version. Yeah, see, that's Kyra out there, just sitting out there like she does out in front of my house. Hasn't said anything to me, nothing. That's my life right there. That's my life. <sighs> you are not welcome here. Do not come back and sit here. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Don't set your little stuck up ass in front of my house and taunt me when you know you're fucking wrong. You guys see, this is your, your guys' Christian influencer. This is your big Christian. This is your Sephora girl. This is your guys' just amazing girl right here. This is your sweet, sweet, sweet Kyra. You see behind, yeah. And that's what I'm talking about, selfish. And that's what I'm talking about, they don't value me because how fucked up was that? I'm here alone. And Kalia has to come back to get stuff and just sit out there. That's how they do their mother. To me, that was so fucking selfish. Like, why in the fuck did you have to come here? Like, it's bad enough you don't talk to me. It's bad enough you embarrass me. It's bad enough you lie about me. But you're going to come here and sit in front of my home with Carter in the back seat. And, and being coached by Caitlin's bitch ass the whole time. Just drive up, drive up, drive up. He's such a man bitch. Damn, Sharon, you raised a bitch. Straight up. Ah, but... Oh, shit. I forgot about Sharon. Hmm. Since we're not give a fuck today. Um, yeah, Sharon has a big part of this. Sharon's the one that picked up Carter from me. Sharon's the one that told them I gave him Tylenol. Sharon Edwards is also the woman, woman that um, I reached out to when Kaylin put his hands on Kyra. And I reached out to her woman to woman. And instead of talking to me, she went and told Kaylin. And that was the exact moment my relationship with Kyra changed. The moment that I reached out to Sharon Edwards about her son abusing my daughter, Kyra pulled away from me. Fuck you, Sharon. Yes, fuck you. That was a bitch move. You should have reached out to me. Because as a mother, you have to know your son isn't right. Like, you have to know these traits in him. But now he has my daughter. Just how he wants her away from me. And um, you should have heard him on the phone. I thought I was recording, but I accidentally hit the stop. I guess it wasn't meant to be heard yet. Um, yeah, you should have heard him coaching her the whole time. She doesn't, doesn't even think for herself. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I can't believe that our life is like this. But I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going. I'm not backing down. And now I don't have anything holding me back from saying everything I need to say. You guys fucked up. You guys really fucked up. You guys forgot. You guys fucked up. Really, really fucked up. Because you forgot that I've been there from the beginning. And, um, <laughs> what don't I know? That should be the question. What do you not know, Karen? See the breed of dude that Kalen is? He, he's a yapper. He runs his mouth about people. He's messy. He's petty. Talks a lot. So I've heard a lot. Because remember, we used to be friends.